Yamada currently serves as a senior advisor to President Obama's Deputy National Security Advisor, Ben Rhodes, at the White House. She has been instrumental in getting the Muslim American voice not only heard, but understood by the Obama administration. Rumana helps to develop the messaging for President Obama when he meets with Muslims and visits mosques. Two years ago, she hosted a Muslim Women Emergency Leaders, Leaders event at the White House, bringing together model women and young girls aspiring to pursue careers in journalism, government, business, and STEM. She is the only hijabi woman working in the West Wing of the White House during this administration, and possibly the first hijabi to ever work in the West Wing. So Rumana, why don't you uh, come on up? And you have this a very, very cool award. And I'm gonna present it to you, and I'm just gonna read. It says, in the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful, to each is a goal to which God turns him, then strive together as in a race towards all that is good. Whosoever you are, God will bring you together, for God has power over all things. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First of all, I want to thank uh, Congressman Liu for uh, the honor of even just being on the stage with him. As somebody who, as a child and growing up, uh, was on the camp of not believing in government, never being interested in politics, always hating politics, and always wanting to stay far, far away from government, it's a true honor to be here on stage with him and to be honored by him. And I say that as somebody who has converted, having been on the inside and having had the opportunity of working in government and having learned the true impact that you can have on individual lives. I'll share a little bit about more, more about my experience a little later, but before I do, I also really wanna thank MPAC, Salam, and Hoda for their leadership and for this great honor of having me here. More importantly, for also getting me out of DC for a little bit to warmer weather. I definitely appreciate it. I also really want to take a moment to thank MPAC, Salam, and Hoda for having always played such a key role in engaging the White House and across all government agencies all these years. They've always been at the table. And if there's anything that I have learned, that having a seat at the table is more important and critical than just being on the menu to be discussed. I also want to recognize them for something that I often don't see in many other organizations that I have truly admired about MPAC. And that is how, as you may have noticed, it's run by all these young, innovative, and energetic leaders. I first joined... Oftentimes it's a little hard to give young leaders the opportunity because you're like, they don't have as much experience, they don't know what they're doing. But if there's anything that I learned myself, as someone who freshly came out of college with no work experience, no government experience, someone gave me the opportunity and put their trust in me in the White House. And through that opportunity, by failing and falling, by losing sometimes, I learned to be better, I learned to be stronger, and I learned to be wiser. And that's how I was able to move up within the White House, and that's how we are gonna be able to strengthen and empower the young leaders of our next generation. I wanna share a few things that I've learned and that I really wanna share with this group, especially given the time that we're living in right now and uh, recent uh, developments that have taken place. That is, I learned the importance under this administration of the importance of grassroots organizing, building partnerships. It's not just about standing for one issue, it's standing for every issue. And we saw that most recently take place at Standing Rock, where it wasn't just an issue of the Native American community to stand on their own, but it became everyone's problem. We no longer can look at it as a Black Lives Matter issue or a Muslim issue. It's all of our issues. That's the only... <laughs> After the election, people have come to me and they said, what do we do with the Muslim American community? And I was like, it's not gonna work that way. We can't just plan about the Muslim American community. We have to plan across every community because that's how we're gonna be stronger. It's important to know your rights because knowledge is strength and so is personality. When I first started working at the White House, my first day in the West Wing, I felt very conscious of myself. I wasn't sure how people would see me. I was nervous, to be honest. 
I wasn't sure if people would see me as normal and fitting in or that I had the same experience as others just because of my looks. I never felt that way again until the day after the election. I became conscious of the fact that I had the greatest opportunity because of this country, because of the values of this country. I was given that chance, I was given that right, and I was able to work in the most prestigious building in the entire US. Personality and character mattered in the process of that. Right now, we're living in a time where not everybody has gotten to know me or has gotten to know a Muslim American or a Native American or an African American. That's where it's our responsibility to make sure that we're lifting up voices across every community and to share those stories. The other thing that I learned that is a reminder for us all right now, which is the four Ps that I follow by. That's patience, perseverance, persistence, and prayer. That is what is going to get us through the toughest times that we're about to face. And at the end of the day, we know that it will make us stronger and better. I always remind myself looking back at the civil rights movement, which was a perfect example. People were hurt, people were killed, people, were suf people suffered. And now look we, where we are today. It's still not perfect. The African American community is still facing a lot of challenges, but we've come a long way. And that's the hope and dream of this country that we know will prevail at the end, which is that we will come together stronger and more powerful. The last piece that I wanna leave you with is, as a child, post 9-11 in middle school, as someone who was called a terrorist, who was told to leave this country, who was pushed down the stairs, never in a million years did I imagine that I would get to work for this president at the White House. And like myself, I've met so many more incredible people and individuals through the work at the White House, such as a young woman from Palestine that I met a few years ago in Morocco who had started an entrepreneurship, a business program to empower other women, such as the woman in Colombia who, with very little resources, created a farming program and training initiative for other women so that they could become entrepreneurs. Also more recently, I met at the White House a group of four young Cuban entrepreneurs. And each of them had barely any money, yet they said they knew that with the little that they had, they had a, a role to play to make the world better. And while it was a little bit funny, it reminded me of how all these years, we may have actually just been too comfortable. So now, is, now it's our turn to work 10 times harder. These four Cubans that I met with, they asked me, they're like, so what's gonna happen to you? Are you gonna be allowed to stay in this country? And I said, I don't know, but I'm gonna fight for that. And they immediately offered to me, and again, these are people with very little resources. They said to me, the one who's a business advisor, she said, don't worry, I'll get you a business in Cuba. <laughs> the other one who's a party planner said, I'll, I'll plan your welcome party when you get to Cuba. And then the other one owns a bread and breakfast, and she said, I'll provide you with food and a home to live in. And while at that moment it was a little sad to hear that, but also encouraging, the biggest thing that I walked away with is that compassion. It's something that exists in all of humanity. And even in the worst of times, we have to remember that it's compassion that's gonna prevail. These individuals worked hard with very little, and yet they still dream big. I truly do believe that in the darkest of the times that we will face and that we may face, comes the greatest moments of opportunity. So with that, I just wanna say that I've had a lot of people, I know we're all talking about what's happening, what's going on, but we have to stay positive, we have to work hard, we have to work 100 times harder. And I'm proud to know that organizations like MPAC exist out there, and I look forward to working with MPAC and many of the other organizations once I leave. Thank you.